In a previous video, I guessed that Marta Cabrera played a secret role in Glass Onion, but that was only because I missed a critical and obvious piece of evidence. I may be overthinking it, but did Andy fake her own death and her twin sister? The first thing that struck me weird about this movie was how much money Blanc and Helen spent beforehand. Bribing cops and journalists, plane tickets to Greece, a full makeover, all from the pocket of an Alabama school teacher and a virtually unemployed detective. Since the story moved too fast for Andy's inheritance to be transferred, it seemed like a rich benefactor was involved. And that assumption blinded me to a glaringly obvious truth, that Helen was indeed using Andy's money because it was Andy pretending to be Helen. I accepted at face value the flashback of Helen identifying her sister in the morgue, but why? A major plot point in the mystery is the unreliability of a flashback on screen. Plus, we witness a montage of all the disruptors killing Andy, yet none of them did. They were all fake flashbacks, which should cast doubt on everything we see that isn't in real time. And I already pointed out that Helen didn't recall Miles' cheek scar in another scene. But for that video, check out the Life After Tyler link in the description. In summary, there is zero reason to trust a flashback of Helen doing anything. That led me to question everything she did, and I finally picked up on the most critical and obvious piece of evidence. Helen does not drink alcohol. She refuses an offer and goes for coffee instead. And it's kind of funny how getting a little tipsy made her a decent detective. But Blanc utters the phrase that I regretfully overlooked. The alcohol content was 9%. To compare, Budweiser is 5%, almost half that of Jared's brew. Meaning that one gulp of hard kombucha is pretty much two gulps of Bud. And we witnessed Helen straight up chugging that kombucha so she'd have to chug twice as much beer for the same effect. Are you catching my drift here? But there's another wrinkle. Kombucha usually comes in 16 ounce bottles, while Budweiser comes in 12 ounces, so that's 1.3 beers per booch. We witness Helen drink at least three kombuchas in the span of one afternoon, and that equates to a minimum of four Budweisers in a couple hours or the alcohol content equivalent of almost eight, which is a big ask for someone who is not an experienced drinker. Yet still, Helen does not slur and does not suffer like a non-drinker would. Sure, she stumbles once, but it's immediately after slipping up and speaking with the wrong accent, which feels more like an attempt to cover up her mistake rather than struggle to walk or stand because she's perfectly coherent and balanced in her next scene. This woman can handle her alcohol, so she is not Helen the non-drinker. Miles flat out stated that a whiskey soda was Andy's drink of choice, which can run up to about 30% alcohol, depending on the mix ratio. So Andy would not have any trouble handling a few hard kombuchas. Miles tried to kill Andy twice, so how does she manage to survive both times? The second time was luck, I'm afraid. A couple inches in any direction and she'd be dead. But the first one was calculated, though very, very dangerous. Fake Helen explained that Andy had sleeping pills in her system before she was left in her garage to die by car exhaust. But sleeping pills don't knock you unconscious, they just make you sleepy. So it's very odd that Andy collapsed suddenly without even finishing the full dosage. I presume that she felt the grogginess kick in and understood that she'd been spiked and hoped to speed along Miles' plan before the pills actually took full effect. So he'd leave sooner and give her that much more time alone to save herself. It's very likely that she was quite delirious by the time Miles left her to die, 
and that Andy weakly pulled herself to safety before carbon monoxide poisoning took her. That is why no one heard the car running in the garage from outside. Andy had already turned off the engine and crawled to safety. While the disruptors knocked on the door, she was cowering inside, vulnerable and scared. No one apart from Bertie J knew that Andy had a sister, and Bertie didn't seem to know that it was a twin sister. Which is odd, because they've all been friends for the better part of a decade, and they obviously like to party. Surely in 10 years, the subject of a twin sister would have drunkenly come up, if she existed. Now Bertie appears to be the only person confirming this bit of news. But did she? Because it's been revealed numerous times that she's clueless about race relations. From dismissing blackface to claiming a song of empowerment as her own. So it feels reasonable. Bertie didn't understand the context of the word when Andy mentioned her sister. No other disruptor is dumb enough to make that literal mistake. Giving Andy the accidental cover for her identity switcheroo though never addressing the group's overall confusion. There are other moments which make more sense if Andy faked her death. Blanc mentioned that he could hold off news of the suicide, hinting to influence with city officials and journalists. But how would he wield that kind of power when local reporting is globally visible? If Andy survived her assassination, then it would be dead simple for him to keep her death from being reported. Yet news of her pretend suicide broke anyway. So who leaked the misinformation in a way that appeared legitimate? The high-powered tech executive herself, Andy. It might have leaked sooner than she wanted, but she is the only possible source. It was Blanc's intention to catch everyone off guard with his quote-unquote Southern hokum. And in the same conversation, fake Helen oozes her own Southern charm, while claiming that she would practice a rich bitch impression with her fake twin sister. These were not offhand comments. Andy is accidentally confessing that she can do impressions of other women as a way of endearing herself to Blanc. And in this way, he's getting caught off guard by the same southern hokum he planned to weaponize himself. This plays out later, when he realizes how and why Miles remained in his blind spot for so long, because he hadn't expected to guess the simple truth right in front of him. Just like he didn't recognize Andy was even further in his blind spot, for the exact same reason. Okay, this last one is weak and just makes me laugh, but watch fake Helen when Blanc says that Miles wasn't an idiot, and how she barely disguises an eye roll, because Andy knows the truth of it, but needs to lead the world's greatest detective to the truth himself. So what do you think? Is Andy still alive, or could Helen just hold her booze? Let me know in the comments. Of course, I could be wrong. Maybe I'm just overthinking it. Maybe Andy really did keep her private life a secret from her closest friends for over a decade. And maybe 9% hard kombucha goes down much smoother than other alcoholic concoctions. But I kinda like my theory better, so I'm rolling with it. Until next time, keep reading between them lines. If you enjoyed this theory, you should totally check out my Wednesday Season 1 video, where I lay out the evidence that Gomez Adams is a retired necromancer, with more than one missing cadaver in his past. Check it out. And please, take care of yourselves out there, and I'll talk to you next time.